Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in between, and happy Bah Humbug to each and every one of you. Yes, I am Diana Clary and the Lavender Lady. How the heck are you? Yeah. So, I'm picking up a little section here of the uh, of the Christmas Marathon stream uh, for uh, any and all of you who are home alone and... Um, with nobody around, maybe we can keep you a little bit of company. Uh, that's the general idea. Anyway, yes, little one. Yeah, I'm not exactly here all by myself. Um, there is a certain Sylvia Kitty who keeps me company. But, you know, sometimes you like to have a human around. Yeah. You're a good kitty. That's what you are. Um... Just previous to this little piece of the stream, we had a, excuse me, ex cult baby, uh, talking about this, that, the other, and prior to that, we had um, uh, purple rhymes with orange, and what of the other sorts of things we've had? Uh, there was a game of Dungeons Dragons, this, that, the other. Um, it was a sort of biblical themed thing. Oh, look who's here. Yes, I was just speaking of you, my dear. How are you? How are you? Yay! Oh, look what we have here. We have the whole um, uh, surfing uh, triceratops going on. I like that. This. The... All right. Yay! Okay, let me uh, let me get over to the um, uh, what is it that you call that? There we go. Okay, I hadn't had the other sound on, so okay, everybody, um, can you hear um, can you hear Purple Rhymes with Orange? Because I had a little bit of a problem. Uh, we can't hear anyone else. Okay, uh, we should have a little something. Can you hear purple now? Um, I I had this. Yeah, we had a little bit of a problem yesterday, and we want to make sure that we can um, take care of things. And oh, hi Neil, yay, and Orla, and Hops. Oh my word, I haven't given Hops watch a spanner yet. This is not good. This is not good at all. Okay then, okay. Um, okay, so we've got a little bit of So they're saying it seems we cannot hear the flying dinosaur yet. So I thought I had fixed it today, but we haven't as yet. We're gonna give it a we're gonna give it a shot. Yeah. So um, we're gonna see what we can do about that. Um, there's the thing over there, and okay we're gonna do that and we're going to go to the default you're hearing me fine but for some reason it's not piping out to the stream okay we're gonna manage hopefully to fix that uh, this is yeah it it is not nice at me from time to time all right let's see if there's anything better happening here uh and okay meanwhile i'm gonna go over and let pirate kitty in Hi, dear. How are you? Is that picking up now? Can people hear me? You can. Okay, so we fixed it. Perfect. I okay, like that. Good. I like that. Okay. Yeah, this thing gives me... It was being nice to me for so long. You know, at least a couple of weeks. And um, 
then it decided to uh, be not nice at me, and that was not good. Oh, oh my, oh my, my day is made. My day is made. My day is made. Hi, Kate. <laughs> oh, I, I need oh. So, okay, well, we got me you've got good company now. here. You know, I, I got up literally like less than 15 minutes before I had to come online, so I haven't eaten yet. Oh, no, we can't so have I'm that. I'm going to hang up my microphone and go make an omelet while you people chat. Sounds like fun. Right on. Yeah, well, me. Have fun. Oh my! Hopefully, it's a good omelet and tasty and yummy and things like that. I was doing nothing but eating peanuts and chocolate all last night, so um, I kind of overdid the chocolate thing. You know, when you're a kid, you overeat the sweets and you feel a little bit. Mm. <laughs> so that's me right now. Oh, uh, so it'll be a little while before I have... Okay, dear, how have you been doing in the ages and ages and ages since I've seen you last? <laughs> uh, better, although, um, okay, there's a thing. The thing? people, uh, yeah, um, the people who live next to me are apparently doing construction oh, on their no. apartment. Oh, no, oh, no. Today of all days, uh, fortunately, my mic... Uh, does not usually pick things up outside of like this. So, oh, so you've got uh, the cardioid, should, yeah. Yeah, it should be fine. But at the same time, yesterday they were shaking my apartment like it was a fucking earthquake. Holy so, shit. yeah, that is. Uh, I, I, I have never been closer to murder. No, oh, <laughs> no, I take my, that back. Oh, I have, but seriously, I, I did. Mm, so yeah. Anyway, eggnog. Eggnog, yay. You know, I haven't had eggnog in ages. Well, I will have whose to fault is that? It's my own damn fault. Yeah, I know. I just don't think about it. You know, the the weird thing I've I've said many times, I have a drinking problem. I don't know if you guys out there know that I've got a major drinking problem. There's booze all over the house and I forget to drink it. That is a problem. Okay? Well, there's currently a, a a virgin eggnog, so there's that. Uh, I figure it's probably not the world's best idea to get schnockered before my own stream. Oh, <laughs> why not? That that you know, so I much more. Out the rum. I may break out the rum for it. So we'll okay, see. Okay then. Okay. Um, if anybody would like to uh, come on in, just you know put a little something on the side there and let me know. And I'm sure we could arrange something. Um, X cult baby, you're naked. We can't have that. Now you have a, now you have a spanner. That's a good thing. Okay. Well, you know, underneath these clothes, I am completely naked. Oh, be still my beating hearts. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you look like naked. I've seen the pictures of your rollerblading. <laughs> yeah, and that was uh, probably the end of my potential political career right there. <laughs> um, actually, I've thought about it, though. If someone were to, like, if I were to try to run for office and someone found those photos, I think the only possible defense I could make is to own it. To go, yeah, oh, yeah I did absolutely. That. You know, it was an absolute blast. Seattle tradition, you should try it someday. Uh, I don't know if politicians will know what to do with someone who doesn't try to spin that sort of attempted smear, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know if they know what they would do. Uh, okay, uh, Dave, you want me to look at uh, Twitter? Are you... Um... Oh, yes, absolutely, absolutely, my dear. Um, absolutely, let's do something about that. Okay. I think more politicians should actually do that. Like when somebody tries to smear them with nude pictures of themselves, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm a human. I have a naked body. Yeah, it deal. does work that way. Okay, Dave, uh, you've got in the, um, you've Sweet. got in the DM. Come on in. Yay. Now that I think about it, did you ever see the sitcom Dharma and Greg? I've heard of it. I don't well, remember having seen it. 
basically sort of you know uptight i won't say right wing but certainly mr suit and tie man ends up falling in love with and marrying a hippie chick on their first date and it does not go well for the family although they love each other and there is an episode in the first season where he decides to to run for some public office and for whatever reason he and dharma end up having sex in their car and someone snaps a photo of it. And it's like this big scandalous headline politician caught having sex with his own wife in public. <laughs> you know? And it, it, and they're like, he actually did try to own it. Not, um, like I have, not he, while I have a mouthful of coffee. Come on. <laughs> he, he did ultimately lose the race because his opponent came out as gay and they are in San Francisco. And, oh, well, well then. Kind of yeah. Okay. But, <laughs> Hi, Dave. Yeah. You said, you said Dharma and Greg, and I was thinking of that one where it's the the gay the gay the gay guy and his and his female best friend. I can't remember what that show was called, but that was the show I thought you were talking about. You're probably thinking of uh, oh, I should know this one because uh, I watched it. Um, oh gosh, Will and Grace. Yeah, I was mm. thinking of Will and Grace when you said Dharma and Greg. <laughs> Yeah, I think they came out around the same time, so that makes sense. Oh, my doorknob head is here. The neighborhood is just shot down the toilet. I don't know. Hi, dear. <laughs> yes, we actually got to see the doorknob head uh, last night on the, um, was it Nacha stream where you showed up or something? And then there's Neil over there. Hi, dear. How are you? How are you? How are you? And you know what I'm going to do? Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, we likes the Neil. Neil's good people. Yes, I am. Yes. I can't do it right. You do it so much better than I do. Mm. I ended up sounding like a drunk uh, Alabaman or something, or Georgian or Tennessee well or... I mean, I keep explaining to people that when I start though. doing a British accent, it slowly morphs into like Irish and Scottish and Australian and then back again. So, <laughs> and, and the goodness knows I'm mixing up regions. Like, I'm sure there's an actual Brit out there going, no, 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 you can't do Yorkshire and Welsh in the same. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, so, my word. Oh, my word. Yeah, I'm sure I'm royally screwing that up. I, I, I'd, I'd love to go to Britain and do this fake accent uh, and see how long I can get away with it. Until there you goes. go. Yeah. It, it, it's very accurate, but it's a bit Dickensian. A bit what now? A bit Dickensian. Dickensian, like Dickens? Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. And, all right. Uh, and Neil, if you feel like coming on in, please do. There's a link sitting in your DMs and everything's good. Neil's such a sweetie. Yes. He is. Nice fella. Met him at Faithless, faithless Forum. Not Faceless Forum. Uh, and and <laughs> he's, he's, he's very, very tall. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's almost a guy I can look up to because I'm about six feet tall. Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. I mean, I'm five, nine and a half, which is the same height as Xena, but Neil's still tall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am hoping, uh, one way or another, I, I'm hoping all the pieces fall into place and I can get out to the uh, the Faithless Forum and see Neil and possibly see you, okay, and um, see Aaron, because, God, he's right on top of the place. Um, I really hope I don't have to choose between Faithless Forum and American Atheists this year. I'd like to do both. Okay. Uh, where is uh, the American Atheist? I know it's West, oh, they, but... They, no, 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 no. They change it up all the time. Uh, the the As I understand it, the philosophy behind where they choose it is let's find somewhere that's not very friendly to atheism so we can spread awareness. So it's in a different place every year. Oh, right, right. No, oh. what I thought they did was what we used to do um, with the annual gathering of Mensa is you'd have it east of the Mississippi, then west, then east, then west, alternating years. I don't think it's that organized, oh, okay, but I'm looking, okay. I'm looking and it says Phoenix. Ah, okay. So. 
Yeah, because this yeah. past time around, it was in Cincinnati. And um, I, I remember going to uh, New Orleans. The South. I remember going somewhere in Minnesota at one point. Um, and then I remember the first one I went to was in Austin. So, okay, yeah. Then. Um, there was um, a number. Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. No, I take that back. I take that back. It wasn't American Atheist. It was Skepticon that I went to in Missouri or Minnesota, whatever the fuck. I don't remember. It, it's been all over the place. It really has. Oh, that's right. One of them was in Utah. One of them was in Salt Lake City. Oh, I think oh, I Easter. remember the year. It, oh, it's always over Easter. Oh. Yeah, we we actually did get preached at by Mormons, which was a lot of fun. Yeah, and uh, the way Silverman put it, you know, back when uh, Silverman was actually running this show at American Atheists, it's yeah that whole Easter thing, you know, as, as it is a giant fuck you to the Christianity, but supposedly the main reason was that nobody is doing anything over Easter uh, as far as conventions are concerned you know nobody is uh to renting places and everything so you get great rates okay Allegedly. Like valid reason that all atheist contests should be at easter yeah why not there was the one time many many moons ago that um the uh apostacon was here in Pittsburgh. Unfortunately, I didn't have the cash to do that even then. This was maybe, what, 10 years ago? Or post, <laughs> Postacon, not, nor, no initial A. But, um, and unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't have the cash and didn't get there. Oh, well, what are you going to do? You know? Well, the, the uh, times I've been to American Atheists, uh, like except for once, I actually had someone funding me which was really cool. Um, hey, I mean, you must get, be nice, you, really. You get to be yeah. a big enough uh, uh, YouTuber and people start just giving you shit. And trips to American Atheist was one of those things. So That's pretty cool. Yeah. I didn't mean, and I understand. Whoa, hey. Yeah, what the heck was that? <laughs> I mean, I understand that it's like partially, it's partially selfish on the, per on the person that's, uh, that's, Hosting you, they're they're like, come, I'm I'm going to be at this convention. I want you to come to this convention. But it's uh, it also it's a benefit for everybody who's there who wants to meet you as well because hey, somebody's paying for somebody I want to meet to be here. There is that. There's definitely that. You know, I wonder like uh, anyone who wants to go who can't. I mean, this is the era of GoFundMe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had so. enough of that stuff going on for medical bills. I'm not going to go to the well too too quickly fair enough yeah fair enough. it's uh you don't want to overdo it you know yeah well you really just you really just need to get down how you're going to get there and the ticket mm -hmm. because i'm sure somebody will be like i've got a couch you can stay in my room oh there's there's mm -hmm. already a oh, setup uh i mean neil has said that he would um like that i share the room with him which is fine by me. The big thing that I have to make sure I have is um, somebody to look in on the little one. Kitty sitter. Yeah, because mm -hmm. um, I will likely be out of town for the, the way we've been talking back and forth, probably a week. And I've left the little one alone for, you know, three days or something like that. She's fine. But a week? Eh, I don't think so. Yeah, I usually just go for the weekend. Uh, although I I got sort of burned by that with the Faithless Forum because no one mentioned all of the extracurricular uh, curricular activities that were going to go on. No one mentioned that there was going to be a trip to Austin. Yeah, to, right, to, right, right. You know, and and so like when my flight got in, it turned out I'd missed a whole bunch of crap. And when, when my flight was leaving, I was going to miss a whole bunch of crap. And I wish someone had spoken up earlier. Yeah, um, I've got the advantage of, you know, someone uh, who had been to all of that stuff and everything else and sort of knew the way around and um, is, is, you know, threatening with dragging me along this time. We'll see what happens. Thank you, Neil. Um, and um, well, hmm? 
Uh, well, I, I mean, okay, it's not the same necessarily with Faithless Forum, uh, but there is something to be said at American Atheist for staying in the hotel because I know I've told some of the the penthouse party stories, <laughs> and it's definitely. I mean, it's not as good as a sci-fi convention, but it's still a blast to do all those room parties. And yeah, we were speak of the oh. devil. Hi, sweetness. You're muted, Your mic's honey. off. You're muted, dude. Honey, you're muted. And you have a ton of dead space over your head. There you I go. Know. Hi, sweetness. How is you? I, I'm sitting on the floor. Uh, <laughs> <I can> tell. <laughs> There's no I chair in here. I hope your <laughs> arse isn't hurting yeah. because sitting on the floor can be, yeah, uncomfortable. How about that? Oh, that is so much better. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't realize it was irritating. Oh, I, my, I, oh, my. Former film student who has never been diagnosed with OCD, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, how be you, sweetie? Well, so far, so good. I'm well caffeinated, and I've already started... Oh, shit. Hang on. It's out of arm's reach. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm going to have to refill as well, eventually. So what? Yeah, no, I did just polish off my eggnog. No beer this time. Yeah. Oh. oh no, it's beer. It's beer. Oh, okay, fine. Caffeinated beer. I kind of was looking to see if we had those. Um, there's this type of beer, I guess that uh, uh, I met somebody at the ACA drinking that says "Now with more Jesus." I was kind of looking for that. But... <laughs> well, a while back, I actually did find um, Klingon Warnog and Romulan ale in cans. Like that's totally no, no way. Way I've got pictures of me holding the bottles. Oh my! Sweet. Oh my! Oh my! And then I'm wearing an Enterprise jacket too. So. Beautiful, beautiful. It's, it's pretty. It's an intergalactic like it. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. We've got the old gang together again with uh, Neil and Kate. Uh, got how many times have the two of you been on my show together? Twice. Oh, a handful. Or a handful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's some, uh, like some pretty decent stuff when that happens, you know. And uh, you, you, okay, you're, you're, you're back. Hi, sweetie. Welcome Hello. back. So, well fed. I'll be eating while I'm talking, but I've got some food. I've got a quart of orange juice. Hey. hey. Good thing I decided to not eat on camera just because no one wants to hear. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's your into ASMR, man. Well, I'm pretty good about eating my mic when I do it, so. <laughs> so. I've got this big bottle of rum that I'm actually now afraid to touch. <laughs> because I was drinking last night and not thinking about the fact that I'm on two different medications for the cold that I'm on. Uh, mm. And then my, my wrist started hurting. And I'm like... Oh, no, we can't am, have am, that. Am, am, Am I having a reaction to, to taking this drug and drinking? I should have thought of this. It's yeah, okay. alcohol it's and antihistamines generally are not good together. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's fine. I'm 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 better now, but it's just kind of wiggy for a little while there. <laughs> yeah, I, but I'm feeling much better now. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was kind of bummed in the last night's streams because I had no idea when I was going to have a chance to sleep, so I couldn't drink anything. Oh. Hmm. Like uh, that's ever stopped me. <laughs> huh. I mean, I, I I could have a little bit of it if I wanted to. Yeah. yeah. Purple, purple, purple had to stay cognizant because he eventually did have to do a little finagling because we had to have someone drop out last night. Yeah, we had a last minute schedule change. Okay. Um, so we had to get somebody to fill in for a slot because computer problems. Oh, shitty. Uh, yeah, um, I, as I understand it, there are a bunch of folks who wanted to be on, but sort of didn't catch yeah. that this was happening until it was too late. Well, when we finally got the schedule together, it's like we were doing it in the middle of the night. So then when people woke up in the morning, we wound up with like three more people than we had time slots available. Oops. Like I said, next, gonna... year, next year we'll just include it. We'll have it include all of Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Make it like a forty-six hour. Well, thing. here's I don't know. here's what we do. We get started uh, the afternoon of Christmas Eve, and we go on until the second of January. <laughs> oh, <Jesus Christ. laughs> 
How's that? Think you're more, more I think you're going to kill Purple and Kitty. <laughs> well, you know it's kind of well, funny. I mean, my 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 stream doesn't start for another three hours, but I'm looking at the page for it, and there's already four people waiting and six likes. <laughs> I've seen that happen on some of my midnight streams, and it's like, you know, people sit there for hours waiting for it to start. I don't get it. Well, you know, I mean, I've I've sat out all night for Star Wars tickets back in the day, so I kind of get it. I, I don't uh, think as soon I'm... as you one of you puts a link out on Twitter, I open the window, like it, and put it in the background. Oh, oh. there you go. So when yeah, it starts, I've, it pops uh, up. I've noticed that, and that's that's great. I mean, you're always or almost always. I think maybe once or twice you were not. The very I'm first... not there. I'm asleep. Yeah, you're the very <laughs> first on my uh, side chat with yeah. Woof. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've had times that I was just going to get the link to post it in Facebook that I was going to start in half an hour and I see there's already like six or seven likes and I'm thinking you know maybe I should quit while I'm ahead <laughs> <laughs> well you know what you guys um, I, Thomas uh, Holy Kool-Aid did a big tweet out for all of these yeah so I, I know was, yeah, was a that big is shout out beautiful yeah. Uh, thanking mm. to him many, many much. Yes. Yeah, and he said he had also put uh, put up the whole schedule on his website. Yep. yep. Nice. 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 You know, there's one thing I cannot figure out, and it's driving me up the freaking wall. I mean, is that um, my my camera is automatically adjusting for like brightness levels and stuff, and I can adjust that in my actual webcam software. But for some reason, I can't seem to adjust it when I'm in a stream, and it is so frustrating. Oh. How uh, you can't you can't go into settings and do that? I can go into settings, but all I can do is adjust quality. It won't let me like like turn off automatic uh, uh, gain and all that stuff. Oh fuck! Very have you tried? Have you tried like turning off your camera in the app yeah. first and then trying it? There we go. Um, so I, I, I'm pretty sure that if, if I were to try to adjust all of that, like outside the stream, the stream will just reset it all for me. Cause it seems yeah. to be very, very program specific. Yeah. Mm. That you can't adjust the lighting levels. Yeah. And then we need this, like we need another crack in my arse, but what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a holiday tradition. Always the snack just, food. Send them my way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on, oh, there's a table full. I uh, cannot find the, the Hershey's Bells anymore. Oh, I remember and the those. Bells yes. were slightly different. Yeah. The yeah. bells were slightly different. They weren't the standard Hershey's chocolate. They're slightly softer and they melt at a slightly lower temperature. Yeah, you eat so the bells. So don't put them in your pocket. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you know, it, it's a smoother feeling in your mouth. <laughs> uh, that could be misconstrued. Uh, I'm not going to say a word, man. Crazy. Yeah, yeah consider, considering he's bi. <laughs> <laughs> Smoother feeling in your mouth. Uh, all right. Okay. Oh. I'm, I'm, uh, no, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> but one, say, are they creep <laughs> one, one good thing about my latest ex is um, she would do the whole stocking stuffer thing. With all the snacks that I dearly love, but um, you know, can't justify the money for. You know, ten bucks for a bag of mixed chocolates. Come on, it's. But for the Christmas, I'd get the bag of mixed chocolates. I get the cashews. There's another one for you. You know, fifteen dollars a pound or whatever the hell it is. And oh yeah, they're not cheap. Mm -hmm. But they're so damn good. Oh, aren't they? Yeah, I used to go across town to go to work um, back when I was about 14. And going through downtown Cleveland, there would be a little place called The Nut House. A little uh, snack nut sort of thing. And I'd always get a quarter what? pound. Hmm? Well, so my place isn't in Cleveland. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'd always get a quarter pound of cashews going through, um, going through downtown. And um, it... it it's just so nice to have that little box of cashews. Oh, man. The not nice the, thing so, about it was going to work when I was 14, man, you know. 
<laughs> yeah, no. Ah, that was not supposed to have sound. Um, <laughs> Oops. Well, okay, so uh, uh, you know what my topic is going to be for my live stream is about Die Hard and Gremlins being Christmas movies. Uh -huh. Well, there's this YouTube channel that I watch called What Culture. And, uh, I mean, it's okay. They're a little obsessed with superheroes and horror movies, but every now and then they talk about stuff I care about. They put out 20 things you didn't know about Die Hard, like, like a couple of minutes ago, right? Oh, really? Uh -oh. Um, every last item is just ripped straight out of the trivia section from IMDb. They said nothing <laughs> that you can't find on IMDb. I'm like, guys, I, I dug so much deeper, so much deeper into my study of why Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Well, it's done during Christmas, so that automatically makes it a Christmas movie. Well, what? yes, but there's a lot more to it than that. But we'll discuss it on my stream. Okay, that sounds good. I, I just wanted to express this, this, this. Yeah disdain for people who didn't actually do their homework i'm kate, actually looking forward to kate clarifying what makes it a christmas movie because there oh. are a lot of movies that take place in december but don't necessarily have to be christmas movies way to, well, way to build the suspense there purple yeah yeah <laughs> I, 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 i've got some reasons there are these hidden little easter eggs that you would never expect to see uh like like unless you really research the movie you'd never get these things but anyway so wait wait what well, time are you going I, live kate uh Sorry. well let's see it's 12 30 now here i go on at four so in about what two and a half hours give or take three and a half hours about two and a half hours something like that there's Very this cool. show if i'm around I'll, I'll try to well, jump in yeah, does, there's, does there's anyone somebody... remember does anyone remember jingle all the way the christmas mm -hmm. movie that had uh, arnold schwarzenegger fighting over an action figure no. Yeah, yeah. No. i'm not sure i ever saw it but i remember its existence yeah. i almost had a walk-in in that because oh, I was in the parade scene in downtown St. Paul, and I came out of the building not knowing what was going on, and apparently they thought those doors were locked, so they weren't expecting anyone coming out of there. Mm. Oops. But then when they edited it, they clipped that bit out. Aw. Well, Almost maybe they famous. had to pay you two bucks or whatever, right? <laughs> yeah. What's, what's well, the going they, rate they for extras really, now? Yeah. Well, well what one of the guys had to come up to, you know, me and like three other people with the paperwork that, you know, we had to sign releases that if this gets used in the film, are you OK with your face on camera? Mm -hmm. Well, oh, oh, you know, the uh, when I was on Tosh.0, oh, uh, I mean, they, they paid me for that, for my appearance. And not just that, they paid me royalties every time the show was was wait, uh, wait. run. You were on Tosh.0? Oh? I totally was. Mm -hmm. I've that seen the show. That's fucking amazing. Yep. That's yeah. amazing. Um, but, but the thing is, to get paid for it, I had to sign up with the Screen Actors Guild. Like, I have an account yeah. in the Screen Actors Guild. Um, the funny thing is, and I've still got it, my last check was for like 12 cents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So is that what you're worth? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, the first one was about three or 400 bucks. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, right. just the royalties. How often does that episode get rerun? Um, well, not anymore. It was like four years ago. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, I was still living in Seattle when that happened. Uh, yeah, I never actually like watched that show, but after you mentioned it in one of your videos, I looked up the clip for it. Well, for like two years, I was getting recognized on the street after that. <laughs> that's that, awesome. That, that's got to be that awesome. Is, yeah. It is, it is, yeah. But I mean, point being though, then like, yeah, the paperwork involved in being on TV or in a movie is crazy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You know. I, I only got recognized um, on the street a few times after I did the news spot about doing the blood donor thing for my dad. And I think my mm. favorite one was, was when I went into a 7-Eleven one time in Ladner, British Columbia. And uh, this little old lady kind of looked at me and did a double take. And I just about walked past her and she kind of held my shoulder. She said, excuse me. And I said, yes. Are you the, the young gentleman that was on the news I saw the other day that started up a blood donor group in honor of his father? And I said, yeah, that was me. She says, do you mind if I give you a hug? I'm like, um, sure. And so she gives me a hug. And as she's giving me a hug, she goes, it's because of people like you that I got an extra five years with my husband. So, oh, that's awesome. uh, that is so sweet. Yeah, that was, that was pretty cool. Uh, 
Well, now the story I was about to tell sounds kind of pathetic. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> I should have waited. <laughs> well, well, I mean, because like the last time, I, I forget it was the last time of the time before that my dad came to visit me in San Diego. No, it was the time before because my mom was there also. Um, we walked into a Target. And we're like shopping for stuff. Uh, and then as we're walking towards the registers, this one guy stops me and goes, you're bionic dance, aren't you? And my dad, that was the first time my dad had ever been around for me being recognized. <laughs> and so that, that was uh, an experience I enjoyed. And that's why this is pathetic because yeah. I'm not a blood donor or nothing. So <laughs> No, but I mean, um, how'd, how'd your dad react? Um, well, I mean, he took it mostly in stride, but he finally understood what I meant when I said every now and then I get recognized by complete That's strangers, awesome. mm -hmm. you know, but I mean, I, I make a point whenever someone recognizes me to ask them their screen names so that I can connect the face to the user. There you so, go. Yeah. Well, what's really fun is why I've talked about this before, but. I get recognized, not necessarily for my channel, although I have been recognized for my channel. But what's really weird, I'll be, okay, let's say, shopping in Target. And over my shoulder, I hear, I know you! <laughs> have I slept with you recently? Right. Or, you know? <laughs> and it turns out that that particular time, I was part of a counter-protest against the uh, Westboro Baptist Church down in the University oh. District of Pittsburgh. And for whatever reason, I stood out to this person. They they recognized me from that. Well, I was, I was holding the sign that read, you know, show me your God, then we'll talk. That might have had part of it. Um, but this sort of thing happens not quite often, but often enough that I'm, I'm becoming accustomed to it already. And... What's mm -hmm. nice is sometimes it's really great. Sometimes it's um, affirming and stuff. And other times it's like, can I just go into a corner somewhere and nobody knows me and, you know, so I can just <laughs> do whatever I want to do? <laughs> it, it goes both ways. Well, okay, two things. Number one, Diana, you have chocolate, like, all here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I know I'm jealous. I was trying to work out whether or how to tell her. Yeah. Um, and, and and number two, I totally forget what I was going to say because that was the funny part. Um, well, I got to say, but, it's, pretty, um, it's pretty cool to finally be in a stream with Critical Cripple or Dave, as uh, he's always <laughs> usually just in the chat. Uh, yeah. yeah, I wish I could remember what I was going to say because I totally had something interesting and now I don't remember and I feel well, bad. I, I kind of wanted to uh, tack on you know, to what Neil was saying about the woman thanking him for the blood doning. Um, part of the reason I did not get to sleep last night when everybody was yelling at me to do so <laughs> was uh, I, I was actually responding to multiple people in Twitter. And I think it is entirely possible that we may have prevented a suicide last night. Really? Oh. Really? Yeah, just just that there were people around to talk to. Huh. Oh, holy you know, shit, it, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, do you mean someone specific? I mean, you don't have to name names, but do you mean someone specific? Yeah, some, someone who I was conversing with privately on Twitter last night. Oh, you my. You know, was just thanking us for running the stream that hmm. they were feeling so lonely and that you know, they were thinking that they didn't really want to wake up in the morning. Man, I have had something very similar happen once completely by accident. Uh, like I, I had drawn a picture of sort of like a knight in shining armor kind of guy. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, big old like cloak and shield and all of this sword and shield and all that. Um, and my mom had taken the drawing off of the table and put it with all of our scrap paper for whatever reason. I, I don't know if she even noticed there was a drawing on there, um, but she was working as a mediator at the time. And uh, she wrote a note on that piece of paper and gave it to like one of her clients. And then about a year later, he said that, um, like the the drawing that she had made because he thought it was my mom he didn't know me at all um 
had uh, like he he had put it on his wall and used it as inspiration to keep going like i am that knight in shining armor Holy and he did shit. not he ended up not killing himself because of this drawing awesome. i had done and i was like my mom tells me this story i'm like wow yeah you put my drawing on the fucking scrap pile mom <laughs> no but, yeah. uh but no that was that was uh yeah it's yeah, just really you know, great so yeah when you the, um oh, well, people asking you know <laughs> why we're doing this and it's like yeah once in a while we do make a difference yeah mm -hmm. yeah i guess so gee it's just really great though when you what intervene or whatever you want to call it uh on the behalf of someone who really at the base of it does not want to check out does not want to die yeah and it, it, it's that <sighs> passing things well, sound so bad but you know it's, it's kind of like that the thing that is it, here and then gone yeah. um it was a very awkward chat for me because i'm not real good with the emotional support things and it's like well, i was afraid you know that that the wrong thing. this it's could have gone south really fast you never so know stupid. what to do when someone starts crying in front of me but if with men not so sure about women with men uh you need just need to distract them it's mm. because they are uh men have a decisiveness that once they decide to do it they go and if you can distract yeah. them for that period of time things tend to pan out well yeah. and i i think that this particular individual Part of their issue was some confusion over what's a man and what's a woman. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. You know, but seeing that we had several people in the trans community who had been on the stream, that's why they were watching this. That's good. Well, then. Mm -hmm. yeah. What, you mean I'm useful for something? God Shit, damn. you guys. I. I'm being beckoned by the rest of the family. We haven't even exchanged uh, gifts yet because we've been waiting for other people to get off work and shit. Okay, so. Neil. So um, great to have you stop in. Well, it's with great us. to have you come by, yeah, sweetie. Have fun. And uh, if I if I'm available later, uh, everyone who goes live, try to pass this on to everyone. Just drop me a link through Twitter, and if I'm around, I'll jump in for sure for a little bit. I, hey. I've been trying to drop the link in your group every time we change channels. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's perfect. Okay. Everyone, Merry Christmas, um, and if I don't see you until then, Happy New Year. And, uh, have a joyous Yule time. Uh, yep. Yes. Have fun. I will see you guys later. Everyone, cheers. Cheers, yeah. honey. Bye-bye. Uh, night court. Uh, so I remember what I was going to say before, because, Diana, you'd mentioned the Westboro Baptist Church. Oh, yeah, okay. And I had my own encounter with them when I was still living in Seattle. A bunch of us knew that they were going to be, like, protesting in front of City Hall. And what I expected and what I got were not yeah, the same. Yeah, yeah. Because they are a bunch of attention whoring cowards, is what they are. Yes, they because are. Because they danced in front of City Hall with their signs until the uh, uh, the news media showed up, and they got their like fifteen seconds in front of the cameras and then bolted like scared rabbits. Mm -hmm. And yes. I was like, really? That's that's a, I expected you guys to be out there for at least an hour trying to get your message to other people. No, no, no. All they wanted was to be on camera again. It's pathetic. Yeah, they were supposed to go to three venues in the university district. The only one they actually did go to was across the street from one of the uh, buildings at Carnegie Mellon. They were supposed to have gone to a, uh, a high school grounds and then... Um, to the pit campus and oh. they just bolted before those last two and it, it pissed me off to no end but yeah I, I i mean i don't even know why they're still a thing i don't mean i don't know why they still have a church i mean i don't know why anyone gives a crap about them anymore mm -hmm. you know like, like well, they made a huge splash a bunch of years ago and now they're done because you know? we've got 24 hour news oh, and they need something to put on and oh, they'll say, go on. <laughs> I thought I heard somebody knocking on my door, but I don't see anything. I was I was trying to 
come in on a camera on my phone because it's really annoying me that Kate doesn't rem remember me without a face. So I'm putting my phone with a camera. Okay, here we go. Let's admit you. It's my ugly mug. Oh. It's... <laughs> it looks like a cat. Okay, there you go. There oh, you go. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. Gotcha. Can't hear you. You're muted. Oh, I'm... I'm well, confusing myself which one I'm muting and unmuting. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, I'm, I'm still just seeing the avatar. It's, it's the, a different window. Yeah, um, she's oh, on okay. the uh, sidebar. Yeah. So. There we yeah, go. I, uh, yeah, I had the pop-up chat over it and it was hiding that sidebar. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is me, hello. Yay! <laughs> oh, <laughs> It's funny, like a lot of people use avatars instead of appearing on camera. And it's interesting the the difference between what you picture in your head and what they actually look like turns out being. Like, yes. uh, yeah. uh, uh, take, for example, Prophet of Zod looks nothing, not a tiny scrap of a thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. What I'm picturing from his voice. Uh, yeah, it same, doesn't match the voice at all. Same thing with logic. I was about to say, matter. yes, yeah. Yeah, there are a bunch of people out there where I'm sorry, but my mental image of what um, you like. Telltale. Telltale's another one. When I finally saw him, I was like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. Yeah, I've never seen Logic without the mask. Um, there's a video or two out there. He's he's yeah. put them up and hasn't taken them down. Yeah, definite definite fuzz face. Oh yeah, I did not expect the beard <laughs> on Logic. I really didn't. <laughs> He's got a beard? Yeah. Does it sound like he's got oh, a beard? Oh, boy, he's got a beard. Uh, sort of the uh, yeah. the lumberjack type deal going there. Yep. Mm -hmm. Big and bushy, and mm -hmm. I remember it being red. Yes. <laughs> You're going to tell us he's looked like a pirate next. No, oh, we have here? No, I wouldn't I, go for I was surprised uh, with the uh, hey. when, when she put herself on camera for the first time. Hi, with Jen. You? Say, I say it again. Original. I don't know that one. Logic's, Logic's partner. Uh, other half. So, yeah, she was Logic. not what I expected. Oh, her to look like. Yeah, okay. Oh, Isis, yeah. Uh, what was really great, I got to hear her uh, interviewed where she uh, told the story of how she and Logic got together. And a very, very interesting little thing going on there. A little story. Because um, at the time they got together, well, she is Italian. And, I mean, as in from Italy. And then she was living in Poland at the time. Uh, and, and the whole thing of, you know, getting all around the world and everything else. It, it was a very interesting little story she told. Yeah, I remember that video because, like, you said she's Italian. And I was like... She doesn't mm -hmm. sound Italian, and then I was like, "Well, wait a minute. That's part of the story that she was all over the place and picked up a yeah mm -hmm. strange accent from from being in like seven different countries or something like that." Sort of yeah, like a friend of mine. One of her fairly recent videos, she did an explanation of the accent and why why the accent even seems to change sometimes. Yeah, that's that's somewhat similar to a, a friend of mine um, who. Is always taken for having a speech impediment, which is unfortunate. Uh, she grew up in Germany and has what is essentially a uh, Belgian accent. So that's not it, logic, is it? It is. That's logic. No. Wow. Mm -hmm. So no, that, that's not going to stay in my head. Cause I will not remember that. <laughs> 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 yeah, um, you never, you never would have thought that, would you? No. no. Did you share a picture? I didn't see it. I did. It was up quickly. Um. Yeah. So, in any case, um, gosh, I'm sure there's others I can think of. I mean, I, I remember the first. Where time the saw, hell? The first time I saw Cirrus, I was not all that surprised. Yeah, right, right. It looks kind of trollish, you know, living under a bridge. <laughs> he was actually the first um, content creator I met uh, 
through uh, McRae's thing, uh, the uh, the Google Plus thing. Uh, when mm. Johnny Drive by discovered me, uh, I ended up on one of his live uh, live streams, one of his after shows. And there's this person who sounds familiar, and yeah, we've we've met, you know, through McRae. And it's, oh my word, how do you like that? You know, so, yeah, he's a. Uh, Oh, another one that surprised the hell out of me was Dark Matter 2525. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I thought I find really funny is my partner has absolutely no clue what any of you look like. So every now and again, I try and show her something and she cannot, no, no clue. Because she only hears you. Because she doesn't see my monitors. No, no, she just can't see my monitors. She's on her own computer. I, I just have everyone, I, I just have you blasting out all the time to annoy you. <laughs> I'm always disappointed in how people look versus how their voice sounds. I never I'm never even close when when I when I visualize. <laughs> well, I mean, to be honest, most of the people on YouTube are hideous bog trolls to begin with. So, you know, <laughs> fi finding someone who's deeply, deeply, deeply attractive is a rare thing. No, I'm not talking attractive. I just just well. You know, they, they don't look like their voice sounds to me. That's okay. Well, you know, and to me, that's not such a problem because I've never been as visually oriented as most people are. Okay. So it's like what somebody looks like is really not as important to me as their voice. Well, I'll, I'll be honest. Um, I I hope you don't look a damn thing like what I picture from your voice. <laughs> Oh, math Aww. pig gets on me constantly about having brought that mask to the ARC protest. Uh, no, uh, Kate, he's a cutie. <laughs> okay. All right. No, what annoys me is people who use realistic looking people avatars, and then you see them and they don't look even like remotely like, their, like the character. Yeah, Paul no. Lachia is not nearly as buff as his avatar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. Paul, Paul was the first time I met him, my brain that, broke a little because he does not look like his avatar. No, yeah, what gets me really about Paul, Paul is, 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 is the fact that he slightly lifts one, one side of his mouth and his avatar doesn't. But when, when he relaxes, he slightly lifts one side of his mouth and I can't stop looking at it. I've never noticed this. I, I just always pictured Paul as being a little taller and mm -hmm. not quite as, as as short and like kind of He's short. Well, I didn't notice he, well, I'm six feet tall, so a lot of people are short to me, but he yeah. was also he was he was shorter than I expected and he was also I not wanna say let me say broad. He was a little broader yeah. than I expected. A bit rounder than you said. Port portly, I think is the word. Okay, I need to find a picture of him above the, below the shoulders. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I've had a lot of people surprised by how tall I am. But then there are a lot of uh, YouTubers where I'm surprised by how short they are. I how didn't realize, that, for example, Zomgitz Chris was as tiny as she is. And Jacqueline Glenn, for that matter, is similarly minuscule. I imagine you was quite short. Yeah, I can um, see you now and I still imagine you quite short. I'm five nine and a half. I'm exactly the same height as Xena. That works. <laughs> I, mean, I, 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 I was just a fraction on me. I was surprised at how tall you are, Kate. Wait, we've met? No, you, you told us how tall oh, you are. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. It, I, I mean, I there's, visualize. There's, there's a big difference between hearing how tall someone is and seeing how tall someone is. I mean, yes, it's, it's I've been this. stalking you. Yes, I have. Yeah. Okay. Well, I've, been enough, I've been to enough conventions we could have met. You know, the weird thing I've noticed... I've never been anywhere, so... Okay. How many other people have felt this way? My perception of my height depends upon my mood when i'm happy i'm taller and what's going on here do you have any idea how smeared with chocolate your face is <laughs> <laughs> other side i was noticing that and i didn't really want to say anything no i'm i wasn't gonna say anything it's a perfect thing for christmas day yeah why not you know 
Well, if you're six, it might be. <laughs> well, some I'm people think I act like, like I'm six, photo. but, you know. Well, you know, that, Diana, that's what you left, should look left, like after right you've emptied out your Christmas stocking and gotten into all the candy. <laughs> no, yeah, there you go. There you go. No, you're completely missing it. Corner of the mouth. So, anyway, you were asking us if we've noticed something besides chocolate. <laughs> you know, besides the chocolate. Oh, here we go. Yeah. My perception of my own um, height depends upon my mood. If I'm in a good mood, I feel taller. If I feel like shit, I'm, I feel like I'm a three feet tall. I don't know if anybody else experiences that or what's going on. I'm, my perception of my height is based on other people. If I'm around anyone, pretty much anyone else, I feel huge. Hmm. I, I... So do you, you see the picture? Oh yeah, yeah. Paul is a lot shorter. Yeah, I am what not is he, in... like four feet tall. I think this was this was at someone's house in uh, in Austin or something. There are yeah, yeah two the people form. I don't recognize, but I only know. recognize about half of them. He's um, tiny. In the front row, the the two chicks on either side of it. No idea um, who they were. I think those are girlfriends to um, uh, Thomas and uh, Stephen. I think those are their okay. girlfriends. One of those girlfriends, or 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 um, Alex's. One of their 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 girlfriends okay. to the to the Brits. Is Stephen oh, there? I take it back. Oh. There's Steven. one other one I don't recognize, but that's okay. Wood Woodford. Yeah, he, he's he's yeah. there. He's right, he's right next to Ocean. The green beanie. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I see him. <laughs> who, who, else do you, who else do you not recognize? Uh, the, the other woman there between Paul and whatever her face is. In Rachel? The Rachel. No, 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 no. Other side. Oh, that's... Um, bet wait, between who? Uh, Paul and the chick in the proud shirt. Oh, that's, that's uh, Drew's wife. Okay. Oh, another okay. sis. Oh, we know her. She's on Twitter. I forgot her name. But yeah, there's, there's Prophet of Zod, and he does not look anything like. Oh, face. I've not seen him smiling. He's got a, mm -hmm. he's got a lovely smile. Yes, he does. And and he's also enormous. The guy is a beanstalk. He towers over everybody. Let's see what other pictures. The only pic the only people in that picture I recognize were Paul, Shannon, and um, that guy with the K in his name. Okay. Eric Eric Murphy at the back left. So there's mm -hmm. Eric. Can you see my mouse moving on the screen or no? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Oh, okay, Eric. so that's Eric Murphy. Eric is a big screen. That's mm -hmm. Kyle Curtis. That's mm -hmm. Holy Kool-Aid. Rationality mm -hmm. Rules. Ocean. Mm -hmm. Drew. Mm -hmm. Shannon. Mm -hmm. Paula Gia. Christina Rad. Mm -hmm. Rachel Oates. Oh my god, I can't believe mm -hmm. I almost forgot her name for a second there. Of course, Alex. And then girlfriends of various people. Well, you left out one behind Rachel. That's Data Jet. I Oh, that is? I didn't... Yep. I don't remember him. I, I should totally him. remember his actual name, but for a very long time he told me not to use it online, and so I only know him as Data Jack. Even though he's told me his name many, many times, he's Data Jack in my head. Mm -hmm. So I need to run away for a minute to uh, put the dogs out. Okay, I need to stop sharing. I, I still have that in the chats, that there are some people I can't refer to by their proper name, because I'm just so used to the handles. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, um, it's funny because there's there's a lot of times where internet slang has changed on me and quite without my consent. I remember back in the dial up days, nobody said handle like we're fucking truck drivers. No, it was your pseudonym or pseudo for short. And it was like that until like the mid 90s when all of a sudden it changed. OK, for me, that's still a holdover from way back in the 80s when we had a CB base station. Well, that's why I said truck drivers, but go on. Yeah. Well, no, that's my my brother was an over the road trucker, so that was the only way we could keep in touch with him. Mm hmm. But like I say, though, the like saying also emojis used to just be called smileys. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I remember. I remember. Yeah. I remember when they were just smileys. Yeah, it's. I don't know. I I hate that where I love a certain bit of slang or a way to express myself, and then the rest of the world takes it and runs with it in completely the other direction. I'm like, 
guys, come on. It was fine. It wasn't broken. Don't fix it. But mm -hmm. oh well. What you gonna do? Don't even get me started on GIF versus GIF. Trust me. Oh, <laughs> you're no fun. Yeah, I actually don't. I don't. I, I pronounce it GIF. Uh, Which GIF. is wrong. 100% wrong. The word is graphics interface. It doesn't matter. Uh -huh. Judge Advocate General is pronounced JAG, not JAG. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, my problem is... Um... Opening the wrong app. Although I'm not sure. quite as fluent as I used to be, I'm still reasonably fluent in German. And when I see a G, it's always what the Americans call a hard G. Uh, German has no soft G. Um, so um, I, I see those three letters together. And the first thing that comes to my mind is GIF. Um, well, it took me a very long time to process the difference between hard G and soft G simply because J sounds hard to me versus G, which sounds soft, but yeah. those two are reversed. And that bugged the hell out of me, still does, because I, I keep having to remind myself, no, no, it's the counterintuitive way. Mm. Or we could just say it the way we, we, we each individually want to say it and be like, Fuck what's well, right. I mean, well, if you're willing to follow in your wrongness, I can't stop you, but you're still yeah. wrong. Um, I mean, the, the, the creator of the format specifically named it after the slogan from the peanut butter. He very specifically said, choosy developers choose GIF the way choosy moms choose GIF. It's named after the peanut butter. It really is. Yeah. I, I've always been an advocate of trying to simplify the language. Like, why do we even need the letter C? If it's oh pronounced my. as either an S or a K, why don't we just eliminate the letter altogether? Because <laughs> cunt, because cunt with a K funny. looks funny. Who was it that wrote the entire treatise on simplifying the English language letter by letter? Um, you, you started with, um, I, I think it was the C went away. And everything became S, so you had S I R C L E or something like that. No, S I R K L E. Yeah. Um, and then another letter changes, another letter changes, and then you bring back the C, although it's not a C anymore, it's T H. And by the time you get through with this whole thing, what is written is unrecognizable. Uh, I have to go and eat for dinner. Is the thing. It's my phonetic. Goodbye, everybody. I gotta go to dinner. Bye, bye, Pirate. Well, okay. You'll be good. Thanks, Thanks so for much coming for your by, help. sweetness. Mm -hmm. Eat well. But um, I have tried to explain to people what it is about certain pronunciations that are either right or wrong or whatever. But I don't. You can't do it with just the English alphabet. You need all those funky like umlauts and schwas and shit to do it, but nobody else can read it, and I don't have it memorized, so I would have to do a lot of research to explain it. Um, but but there are times when I want to describe pronunciation that you just can't do in a consistent way with only the alphabet most people use. Like um, again, I mentioned that that ah. channel, the YouTube channel called What Culture, uh, yeah. and they talk about pop culture a lot. And they were talking about the movie Joker, and they could not say Joaquin Phoenix. It always came out Whackin Phoenix every time. Like you're smacking yeah. the guy with somebody, he's Whackin Phoenix. Um, and and I've noticed a trend with a lot of British people where they look at the letter A and they default to A. Ah. And I don't know how to spell A ah, so people know it's A, ah, uh. you know? Um, but I mean, I, I tend to default to some of the more like European and Japanese pronunciations of vowels, uh, ah, yes. e, o, o, u, like mm -hmm. that. But a yep. lot of like native English speakers don't do it because the idea of e, the, the letter e as e and the letter i as e does not compute for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah I think okay, even I see on the what most I'm doing here. We level, don't want that happening. Sorry about yeah, that, guys. We, English could definitely benefit from having some of those accent marks, you know, just so you know whether or not, whether it's the hard or the soft vowel sound. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm.
Well, in consonants as well, like the little, um, I don't know what it's called, the the tilde key thing, a little swirly on top of an N. Oh, that that is uh, uh, yeah. Uh, fuck, I should know that. I think it is just called a tilde. Well, what, the uh, the little the guy name. that the uh, the Spaniards put over no. the N. Yeah. yeah. To get that no. Can't not sound. remember what it is called, but I. I'm it's called a tilde. Yeah, I, okay. I don't uh, remember what all the marks are called, but like in Finnish, there are five different E's. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Well, you know, like in uh, uh, Portuguese, they have that funky little squiggle under the C. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. The one that what is really. What's that supposed to do? It's just there in squiggles. Yeah, but what is, what is it? How does it change the pronunciation? It just makes it look funny. I, I, think, it, I think it puts like an SH ish sound on it, but I'm not sure. Okay. The one that really gets me, though, is, okay, in English, uh, there is a vowel that is only occasionally recognized and a vowel that is not recognized at all that uh, in American speakers, anyway, call it a consonant. You see, mm -hmm. uh, there are at least some of the vowels in English are A, E, I, O, U, W, and always Y. Mm, I, we had the discussion about how Y should be a vowel all the time, and we looked it up, why people only say sometimes Y, and it, it was the most persnickety little, yep. like, anal mm -hmm. reason for it to not just be a vowel, but the way we use it yes. is 100% vowel -y. It y, really yeah, is. Y is an unstressed... Y is an unstressed I. W is mm -hmm. an unstressed U. Mind you, Y is actually a fairly useless letter we can produce every sound it makes with other vowels. We might need yes. two of them, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it'll you can still do it. Um uh, I, I just don't understand where that where that all comes from. Um and what's interesting is the uh, Diphthongs in English are backward from the way I know them elsewhere. I cannot um, remember what a diphthong is. It sounds like a bad sort of shoe. Those are the two vowels that go together to allegedly produce one sound, but they still, but they don't. Like the oh. ee, like mm -hmm. uh, like i e, uh, hmm. you know, being uh, being pronounced as an i or what is it? What was the rule I learned in oh. grade school? When two vowels go walking, the first one usually does the talking. Um, yeah. Although, I mean, we definitely don't need an I in friend. Right, right. Yeah, the, and there are so many exceptions. They actually prove the damn yeah, rule. I, before yeah, I wonder, that point doesn't feel like it. I but, wonder how much of it is just that the accent is changed. Like, like maybe they used to say free end. Some people still do. In a Mafrian, you mostly hear them down south. No, I've never heard anything that dramatic, ever. Well, well but that's what I mean. It's like maybe the accent has changed over the course of yeah. a couple millennia. Well, like, you know, Diana's saying down south, and yeah, it's actually with the Cajun accent. It's the only time I remember hearing that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I heard somebody discussing once that the English accent, the, the classic English accent, even though there's many different accents within England itself, but the generalized concept of the English accent didn't actually exist until mm -hmm. like the 1700s or something. Uh, we speak more like British people used to. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. And then the other one I've heard is, uh, as far as Shakespearean English, um, would be more found in the Carolinas. You know, to buy or not to buy, that is question. Huh, that would have sounded so ridiculous to, to like yeah. go see it. Like, I mean, I don't even really like Shakespeare to begin with, but going oh. to one of his plays and hearing people blather like that uh, to, to deliver what, what today we think of as some of the most hoity toity, uh, uh, like, like theater ever, you know, and we expect to hear it in some high class English accent. Going there and hearing them sounding like they're from Louisiana would be hilarious. <laughs> But the point is, though, I mean, Shakespeare was was the common man's thing. It, it was it was yeah. soap operas. Yeah, really, it was. Mm -hmm. 
The one thing that I love about the, the proper posh clipped British accent is that the inflection means everything. Yeah. That depending on the inflection, good day can mean everything from nice weather we're having to fuck off, you wanker. <laughs> well, I mean, um, and I, I, I hate to keep bringing up Louis C.K. like I always do, but um, he has one routine about the word Jew, how it's the thing to call people and the most deadly insult, too. All you have to do is put a little stank on it. You know, it's yeah. like, oh, he's a Jew. Oh, he's a Jew. That's all you have to do. And it becomes yeah. like a w horrible thing to call someone. It's weird. Well, you know, you were speaking of the uh, the Shakespeare. Can you imagine um, what uh, who's the uh, person who played Picard? Um, John Luke Picard? Patrick Stewart. Patrick, Patrick Stewart. Stewart. Can you Patrick imagine Stewart. Patrick Stewart sounding like Gomer Pyle? No. No. Because Stewart is a Shakespearean actor. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and that definitely came through as Picard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, don't even get me started on how freaking hoity-toity toffee-nosed uh, Star Trek is, but, you know. <laughs> well, a, a great example on that is in Star Trek is uh, Brent Spiner played Data. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nobody connects him back to the other character he played on Night Court. Oh, oh I right. connect him with the yeah. hammer. Do you want to see my stand. Night Court discs on the shelf? I, I know. Yeah. <laughs> but nobody connects those two characters together as being the same actor. He, I was, on, he was on Night Court? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He played Bob Wheeler. Yeah, you can find oh, I, 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 I There was this hick hillbilly family that shows up every now and then, and he was the dad. And he he was like so slow, uh, like like mentally. Mm. Yeah, Bob and June Wheeler, and they had like a thousand yeah. kids. <laughs> now, see, to me, that's the mark of a good actor when they can play very diverse roles and still be believable. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at Hugh Laurie for crying out loud! You watch him in Black Adder, then watch him in House. It's hard to believe it's the same guy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. The number of people that are convinced he's American is disturbing. <laughs> well, you know, I might have been if I hadn't watched Blackadder like a lot before I ever saw House. <laughs> I still say, and I know some people have been arguing with me on this, but I still say that I want a remake of The Mouse That Roared with Hugh Laurie and all of the Peter Sellers roles. Oh, my word. Yeah, that would work. That would work. Yeah, I can see yeah. it. Yeah, that would be freaking brilliant. And if I ever find myself in a director's position, I'm making that shit happen. Especially since, I mean, okay, you know I'm against remakes and reboots and reimaginings and all that, but The Mouse That Roared, not the best movie in the world, I hate to say. It's got its clever moments, and I love the premise, but when I watched it for the first time like a year ago, I was not impressed. It's just not a well-told story, despite being a good premise. And so I think that a remake would help it. I yeah, think. I agree with you. And also, it is the fact that the premise works just as well today as it did when it was first made. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. it, was a lot, yeah. it was a lot better movie in the early 60s when I first saw it than it is now. Well, yeah. When, I, I'm sure. When I mean, the Marshall it, Plan it, was fresh in everybody's mm -hmm. mind, yeah. The Marshall Plan. I was, I was picturing like like just the Cold War as being the backdrop for it. Well, remember now that the the, the whole premise was that uh, the Grand Duchy of Fenwick was short on cash, and they thought, okay, we're going yes. to uh, attack America, and they're going to beat the shit out of us, and then rebuild us, and it didn't. But they also had, mm -hmm. but but they have the whole thing where they stole the Z bomb. And everyone ran into fallout shelters. Okay, okay, I see where you're coming from. So that's why I'm picturing the Cold War was what made it relevant. But yeah. you're right. I mean, I mean, we do have a lot of smaller countries that probably would love to be conquered by the U.S. So, yeah. Well, maybe not anymore. I'm gonna say less so at the moment. Kind of going downhill, mm -hmm. but yeah. Um, it's not the Trump administration's fault entirely, but the Trump administration, Trump administration is a uh, did, uh, did a pretty good job of destroying the U.S. on the world stage. The, 
The mm -hmm. Trump administration greatly accelerated a problem that was already started. Yes, yes. This yeah. is why I say I mean, that the administration is not totally to blame. I mean, there was so much slow creep that I think people weren't able to notice it. I'm hoping that Trump accelerating it as much as he did forces people to notice and get alarmed yeah. about it. Yeah. I, I think there's a, there's that is definitely the, the best question. hope. What was that? That's my hope for the next election is that, you know, Trump will have run this up to such a point that people will actually get out and vote because they realize how bad it's gotten. I, I guess, but I'm pretty know. sure that this election will be settled by the Democrat nominee. That will determine whether Trump is being reelected or not. Yes. Because if they nominate someone that does not inspire one side or the other, specifically the progressives, I think that that a lot of people just aren't going to bother to vote. Or I, vote their party I've said several or times that Trump cannot win the next election, but the Democrats can easily lose it. You're not wrong. I think you. I think you'd need to. There, are, there are things he can do on the international stage. If you look at how uh, Boris Johnson just won the last election, oy, oy. I think that I think Trump, a war, would uh, probably benefit him. Oh sure, any, any failing oh, the war was you think? To start a war. Iran, maybe. Well, um, yeah. A lot of Americans. There's you know, a few well, things he well, could do internationally. We're already in so many wars. I'm not sure anyone would notice. I mean, we'd have to attack a superpower, and that would go so badly. Mm -hmm. Well, if, if he did like start a war with Iran, or start a war with Iraq, that yeah, a lot of Americans have this big thing that we can't change presidents during a war. Mm. Oh, of course we can. No, we have. Well, why, why, why do you not still have Bush? Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 you know, am I the only one who, when someone says Iraq and Iran, I picture Apple products? <laughs> <laughs> That's just you. <laughs> I mean, anytime someone says I or E anything, I'm picturing something to do with the internet or new phone or whatever. Every time. Can't no, help. but it, every time Iraq and Iran come up together, I think it's talking about the same thing, and it's like conjugating the verb. Hmm. Well, whenever someone says Iran, actually part of my brain goes, and I ran, I ran so far away, like that. So <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure someone's done a song parody, even if it never really got legs. That, but someone's done a song parody based on that. I'm sure of it. Um, I don't even really like that song. It's just, I'm an 80s kid, so it's there. Yeah. Well, if we back up a bit, Orla said something in the side chat about America is a shortened version of English, the reason being the printing, because they charge per letter. Mm -hmm. And that, that's something I've been thinking a lot about is how much is our language changing because of people abbreviating things for texting? Well, that's um, true. Oddly enough, that's I think it's going the other way because it happens so quickly. We, we came up with loads in the 90s and early 2000s. We came up with loads of great abbreviations. And systematically, those are actually getting longer. <laughs> well, well, I find I mean, that I... really... As, as a joke, I love to like when when talking about the queer community to say it's LGBTQWTFBBQ. Yeah. You know, is, letters yeah. were a cost when it was all text messages. Oh, hmm. I forgot about text messages co uh, costing things. Nowadays, no one. No. Yeah. yeah. And this is the point. It, everything was dead short. Well, and, you know, we do still have the problem of, like, on Twitter, you have the character limit. Yeah, so I do, do find tweets. myself you know, rewording and abbreviating things mm -hmm. just to be able to fit it into the message. Man, see, I don't understand why so many people love Twitter. I tend towards the verbose, you may have noticed. And yeah. so uh, when I try to write anything on Twitter, I'm like, God damn it, I'm running out of characters and I'm halfway through my point. And I, I, know you can, yeah. I know you can extend whatever the hell it is you're saying yeah. in an extra tweet, but 
seriously, what's the fucking point? Because arguing yeah. with Christians on Twitter, they can't gish gab you. Well, I suppose. Uh, well, I, I, I hate Twitter because of the character limit and because everybody is trying to do everything so short and quick that there is absolutely no nuance to anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and, and, uh, there is if you break it down. The point is... One of those those abbreviations where you have no idea what the frig it means because mm -hmm. you've just never encountered that particular one before. I'm tempted to start making tweets that's like got little abbreviations, acronyms and stuff in it that no one's ever seen just to fuck with them. Well, and there is a generation problem that a lot of the abbreviations I see online had a completely different meaning when I was growing up than they have now. There is that. Well, I, I, and there's these memes going around of people's moms and dads not knowing what internet yeah. speak is. Like there was one where, where someone had died and someone's mom was sending out uh, like condolence messages that were ending Love. with LOL. And she thought it meant lots of love. Oops. You know, I'm sorry for your loss, LOL. Yeah. Okay. I can see that. Yeah. And, and also because so much of the internet is in text, how many times have you seen something written out like that? And in your head, you're thinking something else. Then you hear someone say it and you're like, really? Because I always thought LOL was lol. Not LOL, lol. Kind of like how they had that website lolcats, right? You know, no one called it LOL cats. It was lol cats. I always thought LOL is lol. Also, ROFL, rolling on the floor laughing. I always saw that as raffle. Yep. Mm -hmm. Always did. You know, now... now You're w old enough to know better. WTF is still WTF, though, because there's no vowels in it. <laughs> yeah. Whiskey so. Tango Foxtrot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah I don't know. It's weird. Well, and, you know, just the, the thing people say about atheists saying, oh, God. Mm. I, I tried using B.O.B. for a long time, and people just didn't get it. B.O.B. Yeah, instead of saying, oh, God, I was saying, by Odin's beard. Oh, yeah, no one <laughs> by Odin. I like to say Merciful Zeus a lot because I stole it from an episode of Buffy where Xander said it. Okay. It was like, Merciful mm. Zeus, Buffy. It, I don't know. It entertains me. Well, I mean, that's one of the reasons. What's that your I favorite Buffy on... episode? Hmm? What's your favorite Buffy episode? Oh, I don't know. I'd, I'd have to, because, I mean, I've watched the series so many times. I, I'd have to. I, just, I've already, I, I don't see how you can top once more with feeling. Well, I'm not in yeah. the musicals. Oh, so. but there you go. <laughs> I, I, mean, I, I mean, granted, there are two or three really good songs in there, but, um, and, and I've said this before on Diana's shows, uh, the problem with musicals is that the songs rarely, if ever, move the plot forward. Mm -hmm, it's usually mm -hmm. just someone bloviating on one emotion they're feeling or one event that happened. But you're basically just waiting for the song to end if you yeah. care about what the story was. Um, it's kind of the way I feel about action movies these days. Because if you watch something like Die Hard, for example, um, the action tends <coughs> to move the plot excuse me, to move the plot forward. You know, every shot, every punch is in service of getting from one place to another. Whereas today, it's just, wow, look how fast these two people are doing martial arts with each other. Yeah. Either one of them is getting wounded until the very last part of the action scene. So you're just waiting for it to end. And it's the same thing with fucking musicals. So yeah. that and rarely do I enjoy the style of music they're singing in. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you like Family Guy musicals? I don't watch Family Guy. Well, see, I I liked the Buffy musical because at the time it was something interesting. I now mm. hate it because it's like, since then, every show seems to think they have to do one episode as a musical. Mm. Yeah. I think that's fun. I, I like it when shows do that, even if they're bad. Well, <laughs> how, I, how I Met Your Mother managed to do it well just because they were always funny. Oh, uh, be mindful. Yeah, the uh, the whiskey tango talks throughout. That's uh, that's NATO, and um, I personally picked it up via NASA. Um, Dave, I don't know. 
Mm. I, I've actually, I've run into people not knowing how to spell my name a lot. Like you're trying to tell the doctor, my name is Kate Farr. And they go, Sar? And I'm like, no, Farr, Foxtrot Alpha Hotel Romeo. Mm. And then they go, you mean F is in Frank? And I'm like, oh. Yeah, what is your accent? Okay, um... say again. What? What is your accent? Well, I, 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 it's very much a mixture of most of the East Coast and the West Coast because I was raised in Vermont and I picked up a lot of bits of Vermont speak. But then I lived for 20 years in Seattle and Seattle has some of the most generic American you ever heard. And now I've spent about three and a half years in San Diego, which also is pretty generic accent wise, unless you're hanging yeah. out with a lot of Hispanic folks, which I'm not, not unintentionally. They just, we don't like go to the same places, but um yeah, so it's it's an amalgam of a lot of American. Uh, I, I admit I retain a few things from New England because in New England, nobody pronounces the letter T if they can help it. <laughs> like, like, like the capital of Vermont, Vermont is Montpelier, not Montpelier, Montpelier. There's a town called Milton, which is Milton, Milton. You know, is so <laughs> like the letter T is truncated in so many words. Yeah, you, yeah. you were mentioning uh, with with your name, Kate. Uh, this is basically mm -hmm. how I ended up uh, speaking NATO, um, because my dead name had hmm. letters that people often, you know, is that a C or a Z or is that you know that that sort of thing. <laughs> so I finally said, "Ah, oh, screw this," you know. Uh, Zulu Alpha Victor Alpha Romeo Tango Kilo um, Kilo Alpha Yankee, and what surprised the hell out of me is how many people got it. See, there are I would have got more it NATO if you'd gone slower. If you'd gone slower, I would have got it. Oh, okay. Zulu Alpha Victor Alpha okay. Romeo Tango Kilo Alpha Yankee. Wow. Okay. My my name was Zavarke. I was one. Mm. Of, I was one of six people in the United States with that name. <laughs> well, I, I mean, uh, I've mentioned before that I was raised by hippies, mm -hmm. and uh, like nobody in my immediate family has the same last name. My mom's name is Jewish. My name is Elvish, believe it or not, and my dad's last name is this eleven-letter Italian clunker that nobody can pronounce properly because of the vowels. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so. Uh, uh, so Last wait a minute. Wait, this is where I, I become interested now. What's the deal here? I can see. Okay, I can see your mom perhaps uh, retaining her maiden name, but mm -hmm. they decided to give you an entirely different surname. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. It, my I was raised by hippies. What do you want? Okay. I yeah, don't my, think I had ever heard of that. Before. But it's not. At least you didn't end up as a star flower. I, you know, I came this close. I came this close. My, my, my parents told me that I, I was almost like a moonbeam or a sunshine or a people of dope or something. This, this close. Or, or so, Zappa's kids, moon unit and dweezil. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I knew an infinity. I-N-F-I-N-I-T-I. -I, I did too. Oh, really? Except I think, you, I, although I think she spelled it with a Y, like like the word itself, infinity. But yeah, we came this close to dating when I was in Seattle. Me oh and my, her. oh my, oh my. Yeah, Finney, um, well, she, she went by Finney uh, mm. because it was much easier to explain than infinity. Um, but yeah. Her... I suppose she wouldn't want to go by Iffy. <laughs> well, wouldn't it be Infy? Mm. Yeah. yeah, actually, my my birth name was uh, cut down to 10 letters because when my grandfather immigrated, he didn't speak English very well. And the person filling out the form, 10 letters was all the space they had on the form. Hmm. Well, so yeah, it, I... it's actually this Polish name. It, it's on my great grandfather's tombstone. That it's this Polish name that goes on for about six syllables. Oh my word! Yikes! And it's kind of like um, a, a Puna Hasapima Petalon in The Simpsons. Yeah. And, and it's all consonants, right? 
Uh, no, I think it's mostly vowels. I mean, he's it, it, the name's supposed to be Indian. It's mock Indian. So Nahasa Pima Petalon definitely has vowels. I, I, uh, yeah, well, my, with, with mine purples. does have the problem that, yeah, oh. the part they truncated off had four consonants in a row with no vowels, so nobody knew how to pronounce that. That is mm. very common in Polish. You know, a friend of mine, uh, his surname was Bzdavka. Um Let's see, B Z D A F K A. You know, <laughs> the A is the only vowel there, and it only occurs twice. And the rest of it is just nobody knows how to pronounce it. So everybody called him Buzz. Well, they they, they do that in like Welsh too, don't they? And oh, like, like my, oh my. And all oh those. God. As part of a research project for something I was writing, I tried to learn Welsh from a book. <laughs> and it's like no, just not not possible. I learned basic Welsh when I was a kid because I lived close to Wales. Okay. Um and I wanted to read the road signs and read all, all the bits like and that. And I found the reuse of letters very difficult. Mm. Because they, they used uh, the uh, F is V. To make some of the sounds you have to contort your mouth into shapes that never happen in English. Yeah. Well, that's the reason I... Only a little bit. That's the reason I don't speak French well at all, is because my mouth is not full of stuff that doesn't belong there. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I've said it many times. I think French is the uh -huh ugliest language. I cannot stand yeah. hearing it. Well, I've remarked several times that how many place names we have in the upper midwest that are the result of somebody trying to write down in english a frenchman mispronouncing a native american word <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah well i mean try, trying to watching some people try to pronounce the names of places that are near seattle is crazy pants like there's, there's this one town where it looks like it ought to be pronounced sequium it's like s-e-q-u-i-m but it's pronounced my, it's pronounced squim a friend of mine lived there mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. you know watching, watching someone trying to pronounce puyallup just by seeing it spelled it's ridiculous some of the things people come yeah. up with it's like, pu puyallup no dude puyallup <laughs> you know. So. Yeah, um, she lived in Squim. Now she lives in Anchorage and is much happier in Anchorage than she was in Squim. Hmm. I, I could not live in Alaska. Um, well, I, I couldn't deal with Squib. I need some magic in the world. There you go. Yes, Squim with an M. <laughs> Yeah, it is, isn't a squib like the name for the 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 thing they use to simulate a bullet hit? Yes, in, yes. in movie, there's a squib. Squibs are small yeah. boom booms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I wasn't familiar with that usage. Yeah, well, the first time I read it when I read Harry Potter, I was like, I know that word, but it doesn't mean what J.K. Rowling thinks it means. <laughs> Yeah, I think she just made up the word for that and didn't realize it was used for anything else. Well, I mean, actually, in a way, it kind of makes sense. I mean, because if the squib is like a fake uh, little bullet hit on a wall or something, you know, and you got a guy who can't cast magic. Yeah. Um, I have a theory on that, but not going to go into that now. <laughs> Um, well, could probably do a whole show about some of J.K. Rowling's bullshit, but, you know. Well, especially now. This is what I mean. Yeah. Oh, don't worry, I'll get to it one day. But I mean, even before mm -hmm. that before that came out, it's just the, the Harry Potter books were some of my fiancé's favorites. Ah. And often ones that I would read her to sleep with. So I it's see. like the first five Harry Potter books, I've read each of them like eight times. Yeah, I've I've known for a while that uh, Rowling didn't like us. Uh, it's only recently become a lot more widespread, or m yeah, was much more widely known. 
There we are. Um, well, I think it seemed weird ever since she made that comment in that interview about Dumbledore being gay. And it's like, what was the point of even throwing that out in an interview if it was never included in any of the books? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's, I guess... It, it was included in the books in a subtle way. Was it? Yeah, it was It was the relationship between him and... Um, I forget names completely and utterly. The, uh, the guy from... Uh, Grindelwald, was it? That was it. Him and him yeah. and Grindelwald. It's the reason that he didn't didn't get another relationship. There's no relationship after Grindelwald. Grindelwald was was who he loved. Is this in the main books or after? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm telling. You, I, that's why I said it's subtle in the books. It's not talked about. Okay. That, but yeah, the I mean, fact it, that there it, is the... wasn't there some spinoff though? Someone's mysteries of books thing. Yeah. Or... Yeah, some of the movies that were made it? after the Harry Potter series. Oh, so those were never books then? I, that... I think they were basically books that were written with the intent of making movies, so it's more like they were screenplays. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me. She can't write any more books because she swore blind there would only ever be so many. Well, so I mean, she, she has... probably start a different series, couldn't she? Something that has nothing to do with the Potterverse. Yeah, she, her, 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 her attempt at doing that failed. Oh. So, so, so she, so she, she now, she is now trying to, without writing another Harry Potter book, <laughs> writing more Harry Potter books. Hmm. <laughs> that does happen to some people where they they get really popular for something and they try to write something else and it's just it falls flat. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, part of that's fans have expectations of the author, then. I suppose, but I don't know. I just said it's part of it. Yeah, it's not always the main reason. Yeah. Oh, we've got Pine Snake with us. Haven't Yay. seen him in a while. Hi, sweetness. That no, that that's got to uh, be infuriating to be typecast like that, you know, to where you can only mm -hmm. do one thing. Uh, Nimoy yeah. hated being typecast, for example. Say the uh, name again. Nimoy. Oh, Nimoy, gotcha. Yeah. Well, and Robin Williams, that was, you know, they kept saying everything he did was a comedy. And oh, clearly he was... he was trying to break out of that. And he mm. did so very, very well. He was a yeah. a very, very good dramatic actor. Well, yeah. Like Bill Murray is, has tried to break out of comedy, too. Yeah, many, I, many comedians I really feel are bad that actors. Robin Williams got sold so short on his dramatic work. Mm -hmm. Wonder if that had much to do with his suicide. I've often wondered about that myself. I would not be surprised to find that it was not unconnected. Hmm. Yeah, string all those negatives together and see where it gets you. Um, well, you know, it's funny. We were talking about language before. Uh, there was like a college professor, a linguist, or something who was trying to explain to his class about how a lot of foreign languages will have these sort of um, double positives that equal a negative, where it's like if you put yes and and sure together or something like that, it would produce a no. Oh yeah, and sure. Even, I and know. It, and then, but then he was saying, but English doesn't have that. And one of the students said, yeah, right. <laughs> so, I mean, and, and I don't know if that's an apocryphal tale, but it's not a joke with a punchline. I, I heard that somewhere told as an actual thing that actually happened. Well, as, as far as an actual thing that actually happened, James Burke tells a story about... Um, one of his associates that he worked with who got his PhD in the use of the Oxford comma. Mm, okay, I love me the Oxford comma, I does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but just to, to get your degree just based on that. You know, it's just such a niche thing. I, I'm and... trying to picture his doctorate. <laughs> Hi, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm Ken Hovind. <laughs> oh, but, but, but I mean, you like there's those memes going around. Like I or uh, like uh, to my bachelor party came strippers, Stalin and Hitler. And if you don't put the Oxford comma in there, you get 
Hitler and Stalin as strippers, yeah. right? And uh, uh, that could be his entire freaking thesis right mm -hmm. there. Just like, yeah. Yep. There, there was a court case of a union contract that was thrown out of court for lack of a comma. Okay, then. Mm -hmm. now, it's, yeah. it's interesting that you mentioned Burke because, uh, my word, the way he can tell the story, the way he can um, describe historical events. I mean, he could read the dictionary and make it sound interesting. One of my uh, yeah. One of my favorite. Uh, what do you call them? Documentarists or something? Yeah. Documentarians. There we go. Oh yeah, I, I absolutely love you know all the stuff he did with PBS and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got most of it over here, and I still have to send some of it to you. That's right. Yep. Yeah, I've I've got most of his books, and I've got uh, several of his uh, lectures in the computer. Okay then. Um, is around here. I've got the stuff he did um, with the BBC for <laughs> yeah. for the flight of Apollo 11 because he was covering that for the BBC. And I have a recording of that. Okay. I, I like yeah, I, I have a couple of recordings of him uh, basically narrating the moon launches. Mm-hmm. And, and just the way he could describe things, uh, speaking of how the heck did he put it, when the public finally caught on that these men were not simply putting themselves into tin cans and hurling themselves into the sky to kill themselves or something like that. You know, just Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, what well, wasn't I, there? I, I always like just... One of the first astronauts was going, I'm not a pilot you're just sticking me in here to have me in here or something like that where where he he felt completely superfluous to the mission yeah that sounds like either al shepherd or wally shara because one of them i hmm. forget which one talked about chimp mode yeah i think that was a thing mostly in the gemini missions that they felt they had no control of the craft at all yeah well Mercury, actually, I'll tell you, Gemini really went places. Because that's where you started doing the rendezvous and the docking and the whole bit. Um, yeah. Mercury was all ballistic flights. Um, where you went depended on the direction you were pointed and how fast you were going at engine cutoff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, and you sat there and you were going backward. You, you were flying ass first. Yeah. And a, a I, I did not even like doing that on a train. Mm -hmm. And a number of them commented that they did not like flying that way. I can see that'd be pretty unsettling at those speeds. Well, that they kind of wanted to know what it looked like in the direction they were headed, instead of yeah. going there and then finding out what it looked like. <laughs> Well, it, it would be nice to see what is going to kill me before the impact. Yeah. It's I don't just... know. Sometimes I, I kind of hope that it's completely unexpected. Seeing it coming, yeah. even for a moment, would just be like, oh, crap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, James Burke, one of the other things I loved was the way that he put society in perspective. And one so line I remember know? from one of the connection shows talking about lightning rods. Mm. Was that the lightning rod? The lightning rods were invented because the gunpowder stores kept taking, getting hit by lightning and exploding. Mm -hmm. And he was saying this was serious. Now it wasn't just costing lives; it was costing money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now you've got um, you me know, wanting to go and watch all that happened. shit. I'm glad it's never happened, but sometimes I wonder what it's like being struck by lightning. I can't deny I have wondered that. <coughs> I it's, mean, it's I, one of those. The, it, have you seen the Doctor Who episode, uh, The Pit? Satan Pit? Uh, no. David Tennant is talking about the fact that you have this instinct when you, you, you're looking over something, part of your brain, and you're looking down into a hole or into something, your brain goes jump. And when I see lightning, a part of me is just like, let's go stand out in the middle of the field. I think I've heard well, I guess, some... 
Mm-hmm. Well, I guess my thing is that if I ever was struck by lightning, I would feel really, really ripped off if I didn't get superpowers out of it. <laughs> there you go. Now, I've, I've heard or read or whatever some descriptions where uh, these folks will continue to feel the um, the electrocution into the far future. That that, mm. that, that feeling yeah. stays with them. And then I, so many of them end up deaf. This is yeah, mm. I never had the experience of actually getting hit by lightning, but I, I did have the experience of feeling the charge uh-huh. that I was standing there and I felt like all the hairs on my arms stand up. And a tree about a hundred feet away from me got hit. Okay. Mm. Yeah, my sister came about this close to getting nailed by lightning. Um, and of all damn things, she was in a swimming pool. Because uh, <laughs> the slimy bastards had a backyard swimming pool. And okay, it's starting to rain a little bit, and everybody comes inside, and she's still swimming around in the pool in the whole bit. And then you hear, bam! And this bright flash. And it was about 50 feet away that the uh, that the lightning bolt hit a, <laughs> hit a tree. And her feet did not touch the ground between the swimming pool and the back door of the house. <laughs> Never saw somebody so white in all your life. I mean, even- Have we got it all... Hmm? Go on. I was say, have we got it all wrong? And it's Aquaman that controls lightning. And maybe, this is how maybe, he cooks. maybe, maybe, maybe. Oh, perhaps. I saw a great meme. I don't think I could find it right now, but it's got it. It looks like a bolt of lightning hitting a rainbow. And uh... somebody captioned it as, "Yeah, like when God just dis- decides to destroy your city, but the gays deploy the rainbow shield." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that one's been making the rounds for a while. Like in the last month or two. <sighs> what have we got going on over here? Um, somebody's glad to hear something. I don't know. In the, um, in the chat along the side there. And who oh, yeah, I'm looking, but I don't see. I don't what see what's seeing. going on, and I'm too lazy to scroll. <laughs> well, Be Mindful is asking how we feel this lovely 25th day of the month. Um, I, well, I've already been working on my, excuse me, on my financial books. I, uh, since there's no financial activity going on on my channel for the rest of the year, I closed those books out. And um, Yeah, well, we had Compelled Unbeliever come in. Hey, hey, hey sweetness. And I see Maya in there. I don't know how long she's been around there for. It's the best Christmas we've had, apparently. Okay. New holiday. Well, New holiday. I like it. I like the idea. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I think that there are not enough wacky holidays that are completely meaningless but are still fun. I saw a study a while ago that said that that bank holidays are economically good. Okay, you're going to need more holidays. Go on. Uh, Because because here we don't have bank holidays, and I don't. Oh, it's just they're just we we call them bank. They're they're just holidays, but we call them bank holidays. Like your your President's Day and things like that, Memorial Day. They're bank holidays. Yeah, yeah I know where, what you uh, mean. It's basically things... do-nothing holidays that just the banks and the government offices are closed. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, I have to admit, I'm I'm kind of wigged out by the fact that the folks over in Britain will call vacations holidays. Because as far as I'm concerned, a holiday is something that's kind of more global. Everyone follows it because it's on the calendar kind of thing. You know, Christmas is a holiday. New Year's is a holiday holiday ween is a holiday all of those are holidays but when my family and i decide well there's no like like calendar event that's dictating this i'm just taking my vacation days from work that's vacation yeah, that holiday well i, I <laughs> understand have vacations. That it's a holiday you know as it's a celebration that you've got a week off of work or a day Uh, I mean, like like St. Patrick's Day is a holiday, but I don't think anyone really gets that off. And it's definitely not a week long. Yeah. Mm. 
Although, you, like, well, you're right. We have holidays. Enough. Well, but I mean, those are holiday. But 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 I'm what I'm saying is that a vacation is more yeah. of a personal thing. I'm going on vacation to the Bahamas. Yep. You know. Well, you're vacating the premises. Yeah. One of those Basically, deals. yeah. I'm I'm going on a trip. Although although actually, I mean, you can take vacation at home too. It's just that uh, you know, it's it's well, not no, a like a vacation. Like it's not a holiday because people outside of your immediate family aren't doing it too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the, yeah. Of course, the bit, I don't know. the bit about vacating the premises, um, for whatever reason, Windows 10 decided to uh, put up a, uh, you know how the, the picture comes up when you first turn it on and then you go to your thing and put in your password and all that bullshit. They gave me the Chicago uh, Chicago skyline, and oh um, my, it was so nice to vacate Pittsburgh to a place that I remembered fondly, and I discovered just how much I missed it because I hadn't been there since the mid '80s. Yeah. And I, if I if I could afford it, I'd be living there right now. Compelled unbeliever says we need an atheist day, and I know there is a National Atheist Day, but I'm not is sure there? what date it is. Hmm. I, is going I to think find. every day is atheist day, really. Is that... I'd suggest, is it, is it the first full moon after Eucharist? Yeah, it might huh. be. <laughs> Ascension Sunday, Ascension Sunday, the 15th birthday <laughs> after Pentecost. I don't know if anyone gets that reference. but Yeah, I, I've got a whole video on how it is they figure out when Easter falls. Oh, and my word. And that was word. one of those I had... I had to put in the claimer, I swear I'm not making this up. This is actually how the Vatican calculates it. Yeah, it's not chicken guzzard, isn't it? No, it, it's, uh... it's the first Sunday after the first full moon following the vernal equinox, unless the full moon falls on a Sunday, in which case it will be the following Sunday. Oh, this is crazy pants. Yes, it is. And now... So instead... they know the day he was born, but the day he died... Dances around. They don't know the day he was born. Yeah, well, and, and actually, it makes more sense if you flip Christmas and Easter because the Bible clearly indicates he was born in the spring. Yeah. Still, it sounds like trying to do your taxes. Like, you owe 15% on this, except in this condition, unless it's yeah. that condition. And, then, you know. It's, it's like it's Easter Sunday has to do with deductibles and stuff. Well, and the, the whole point of it was that the church wanted to make sure that Easter Sunday never fell on the celebration of the equinox because that was a pagan holiday. Mm -hmm. mm. But of course, they cheerfully appropriated the Yule log. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and even Easter, I mean, you know, the rabbits and eggs have nothing to do with Jesus. Those are fertility mm -hmm. symbols left over from the pagans. Mm -hmm. The rabbits don't lay eggs. What's going on here? Yes, they do. They they lay Cadbury eggs. Come on, don't you well, know? Well, Kate, Kate, this is the reason the Easter bunny hides the eggs. Ah, Would you want everyone to know you've been fucking rabbits? <laughs> No, or the fucking chicken, rather. Sorry, I messed that up. Oh, for the love of St. Gulick. I'm looking at the clock here, and who's coming up after me? There's somebody uh, between you, you and me, right? Yeah, it was <coughs> someone whose name I don't recognize. Yeah, Johnny Drive-By comes oh, in. Oh, Johnny. Too. That's okay. Oh, well, I do know that name. I don't know why I didn't rec remember... I guess it was the shield logo that I didn't recognize. Okay, because yeah, yeah uh, I have sixteen fifty-two hours here, so uh, we don't want to trample on Johnny. Yep. So let's be mindful of when this is going to end. No, I'm not trying to run away. I'm not really. Um, I mean, you you guys already know. Well, many of you do that. I can run a ten-hour live stream. <laughs> no, no, we've never noticed that. No. <laughs> so why don't we go around the table here and uh, what's everybody up to in the near future or the far future? Okay, I'll start. Okay. 
Well, um, she did say the far future, so I thought yeah, that there was you. Go. I, I, I was thinking it. I didn't want to say it. Um, <laughs> not a lot, honestly. Uh, I'm just trying really hard to finish that script for the animation I'm working on. Writing action scenes is hard. It was so much easier to write when the characters are just chatting with each other, but writing action scenes, trying to picture in my head, will this work timing-wise? And knowing that uh, I will have to recruit actors at some point and, and have them read the lines and maybe have to get them to reread stuff if I do rewrites and all this stuff. Oh, it's frustrating. But hopefully I will be able to finish that animation or at least get the voices so I can start animating soon. That's, That's very like my good. Only, it's like my only yeah. real plan for the future that isn't just carry on carrying on so i i know exactly what you mean i'm having the same problem with my book that i don't know how to write the action scenes i can do the dialogue you know it's when they're chasing each other around and shooting at each other i don't know how to put that across well and and another hard part is um giving the characters uh, that that moment near the end where they're in the worst trouble they can possibly be in and then pulling it out of the fire anyway. Because if all they're doing is winning, that's yep. not interesting. That's not entertaining. So, you know, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with, with writing a well-structured script. And I'm working on it. I swear I am. I've yep. got about 30 pages right now, which is a lot. But, well... Um, yeah. There Especially are a couple of YouTube in... channels I follow just for some good writing advice. Yeah, 30 pages is a hell of a lot when you're in six-point type, right? Well, I don't know what point type I'm at. I just know that it's uh, 30 pages. <laughs> <laughs> so well, 72. Within those 30 pages, some of the main characters born are born, live, and die, right? <laughs> okay. Oh, right. Oh, my and uh, yeah, Johnny, I'm looking at your page. I'll hang on here until you're up and running so we don't have a um, dead space, if you will, um, and stuff like that. And let's see, uh, okay, that's what Kate's up to. And um, okay, Purple, what you got coming? Um. I actually do still have uh, one short edited video that I want to get out this week because it pertains to this period between the solstice and the new year. Um, it's actually one I had put out last year that got accidentally deleted, but I wanted to remaster the sound anyway because I've learned a lot more about just the sound editing. Okay, um, other than that, just my usual live streams and... Uh, well, you know, tonight I'll be wrapping this up at midnight, but then again, okay, tomorrow, then. Thursday night is my normal Midnight Mid America. And uh, Pine Snake, thank you. Thank you for uh, bringing to my attention that Mr. Bear had no spanner, that Mr. Bear was indeed naked. We have remedied that. Yes, we The bear have. was bear? The bear was bear. And um, you guys know did what you, I... Did you answer the question? Did so, you answer the question about how you milk a bear? How you, I was asleep. How you milk a bear? Yeah. I don't think. Yeah, that came up in the chat last night. I didn't. Get, I didn't see if there was an answer to it. Very carefully. I don't know. <laughs> okay, that probably works that way. Yeah, why not? Oh my! Oh my! Oh. But uh, yeah, we're not milking any bears here. Um, yeah. Of course, if you take a certain definition of the word bear, you can't. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yep. But not not without some um, exogenous hormonal help, anyway. <laughs> I, I I hear it can be done, but it takes a lot of work. And then yeah, and then we've got uh, you just show up. Um, Badger, you know, laid on, and we're all set here, you know. Yeah, you came in. When did you came in? Uh, 4.52, is that it, honey? I don't know. 
but uh, and then I'm just doing my regular stuff here and not much of this, not much of that, not much of the other. Jen, you are a uh, movie night regular, right? Well, yeah, most of the time I'm regular. Okay. Mm-hmm. And those times you're not, you know, there's, that's time for Castoria. No, Metamucil. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Mm. Fiber. Yes. <laughs> I cannot remember what's in Castoria, but it's... Uh... Castor oil. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> and Castoria sounds like a place near Astoria. That's a gay just, bar, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. No, Astoria <laughs> is a place in California, I think. Might be elsewhere, but it's a place. That, that was a pun. Yes. It wasn't funny. <laughs> so what? I have, I have to look this up now. Um, uh, I, I know that Astoria is a city only because there was a U.S. cruiser named for it. There was a movie set there. It's, it's also half of Wal- uh, Waldorf. Yeah. Wait a minute. I think it's near Chicago. Isn't Astoria where Wayne's World took place? I don't know. I mean, I'm seeing one in Oregon. I'm seeing uh, located in the uh, the borough of Queens. Uh, what else do we have? We've got some stuff over here. Okay, all I'm seeing is Oregon and New York. Uh, I know there's more. There's got to oh, be Oh, wait a minute. Astoria. Astoria, that's the Goonies is Astoria. That's right. Oh, my. Okay. So yes, the... yes, that's right. It was the Goonies, not Wayne's World. Duh. Okay, yeah. When you said Wayne's World, that didn't sound right because I grew up in the Chicago area, but... Just wasn't making a connection there. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I see that Johnny has a blank screen going, so that's okay. Uh, yep, but so at, far. At least he's uh, doing the streaming at this point, and then something will come Yeah, well, at least we got the link out there. I sent the link out on Twitter. Yeah, well, we've got five people watching now so far, so that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing at all. <laughs> How many people are waiting in my room right now? <laughs> well, we gotta we gotta go look and to see just for the heck of it here. Um, where are we? Uh, uh, live streams and it looks like four. Oh well. Yeah, and may uh, between Milwaukee and Chicago, um, they've spread to the point that their suburbs kind of bleed over each other. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Um, mm. Well, what is it? One metropolitan area from yeah Milwaukee to Gary? Megalopolis. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, one one city that spreads across three states. Mm-hmm. Milwaukee, Racine, oh, Kenosha, look, it's Chicago. it's Johnny. Johnny's here. Johnny so, Five. Johnny, Johnny says going live in two. Johnny Drive By is now live. Um, do we have the um, Do we have the link in the live stream here? Um, Looks like I've that Andrew Badger just did it. Oh, good. Okay, great. Okay, somebody put up already. Yeah, because mm. I was just about to, but if if Badger beat me to it, that's great. Um, right. So we can start uh, slowly. Okay, and uh, I sent it over. out on the on the Twitter feed. So, all right. Okay, that well, sounds I'm good. Gonna go rest up a bit and prep for my stream. Yeah. So. Okay. I'll be yeah, around I'll in a couple idea. hours too, knocking at your door, and we'll be all mm-hmm. set. All righty. Take care, everybody, and I want to thank you all for coming. All of you who are here. All of you who are not here. And um, this is a very good thing. So let me say to all, uh, thanks a lot, troops. See you on the other side. Good night. Okay.
Good night. See you all over at Johnny's in a little bit. Bye bye. Oh my, let's get over here and live streaming. Look at that. 